We are in the dying days of physical media and while digital media seems like a convenient option to save on space, it comes at a cost of losing a lot of goodies like deleted scenes, behind the scenes, and film commentary that often reveal details around the film's story. Like Scream 4, with the discovery of Marnie Cooper and Jenny Randall's bodies inside their home being staged like Casey Becker in Scream 1. If a filmmaker doesn't allude to it in special features, they may have hidden easter eggs in the film that reveal details about the story or character in the film, pay homage to what came before it, or recognize a person in real life. The very first reference to Easter Eggs appears in 1975's comedy musical, The Rocky Horror Picture Show, where the cast had organized an actual Easter egg hunt on set. Only not all of the Easter Eggs were found, and some of those eggs ended up in the actual movie. Easter egg searches in genre films has become a fun hobby for many media outlets and on rare occasions. An Easter egg can go undiscovered for years, even decades. Like the 33-year-old Easter egg discovered in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure on 4K released in 2022 where we see the great ones sitting over the Circle K convenience store. Now before we proceed, we must warn you that this list contains spoilers because these easter eggs reveal the plot of the story and you will only understand them after watching the film. So here are 5 mind blowing hidden easter eggs that reveal too much in the horror films that you may not have or probably heard of. Radio Silence directors Matt Bettinelli Olpin and Tyler Gillette of Scream fame, who hid hundreds of Easter eggs and references in their Scream films. This is nothing new to them because, with the film Ready or Not, the devil was literally hidden in the details, revealing the story's darker themes early on. For starters, Mr. LaBelle, the game master responsible for the Le Domas family's wealth, his last name is an anagram for Belial one of the devil's aliases in the Old Testament. The Le Tomas name can be rearranged to the name of the fallen angel, Asmodel. In Ready or Not, newlywed Grace must hide from her in-laws from midnight until dawn while they hunt her down with guns, crossbows, and other weapons as part of a family ritual that is played when someone new joins their family. The secrets of the family and plot of the story are revealed early on when the film scrolls past several board games, the first being LaBelle's Gambit, which features a devil on its cover. Then we see several more games like Family Ritual, Towers, Secret Council, Abracadabra. Later in the film, if you have not figured out what is going on, we see these games again, but with the addition of Sunrise and Public Defendant. Number four. If only they had understood what they were saying, they all might have survived in John Carpenter's masterpiece, The Thing. In the opening scene, we see a Norwegian helicopter in pursuit of a sled dog that is on the run in Antarctica. The dog runs off to a nearby American research station where that research team quickly gathers outside to investigate the shots that they hear being fired. The helicopter lands just outside of the research station, where the passenger gets out with a grenade and attempts to throw it at the dog, but accidentally loses it behind him, blowing himself up, leaving just the pilot to finish the job. The pilot begins to yell at them while shooting at the dog, sending the research team to take cover while the pilot stalks the dog through their facility. Before they could get an explanation or restrain him, Gary kills the pilot. Now, if you know Norwegian, then you would have been ahead of the game when watching the thing. And had the film spoiled for you because the pilot was yelling, Get the hell out of here! That's not a dog! It's some sort of thing! It's imitating a dog! It isn't real! Get away, you idiots! Number three. 
It just wasn't in the cards for teens in It Follows, or was it there all along? Independent film It Follows, released in 2015, quickly gaining a cult following and was declared as one of the scariest films of the year, grossing $23.3 million on a $1.3 million budget. Jay is stalked by a paranormal entity that can take the appearance of any person. It's a curse that has been passed on to her by her boyfriend Hugh after she sleeps with him. After tying her up, revealing an ominous presence in the distance approaching them, he explains the rules of the curse to her and he leaves her for dead. Now, just in case you were not clear on what was going on in the film because of Hugh's frantic explanation, we see a few of Jay's friends later in the film sitting on a porch playing the game Old Maid. Similar to the film in Old Maid, everyone is dealt cards where the object of the game is to make as many pairs out of the cards you have in your hand and not be left with the old maid by the end of the game. Just like the curse in It Follows, to rid yourself of the card, you must secretly pass it on to one of the other players to avoid losing. Number two. While Final Destination 2 has scarred many audiences around the world by instilling a fear of driving behind a log truck, the first Final Destination invites us to take part in the character's easter egg hunt for clues revealing who may die next. Other than all the ominous clues we get leading up to Alex's vision of the plane crash, we also see how each of the survivors will die later in the film. First on the plane we see Todd making a strangling motion to Alex when Krista asks Alex if they can change seats so that she can sit with her best friend Blake. After Alex's vision and the meltdown causes a fight on the plane that results in several of them being kicked off, we see the clues to how the other survivors will die in the lobby of the airport. Todd hands Miss Luton a rolled up towel that she uses to place on the back of Alex's neck to comfort him. The next time we see her reach for a towel, it pulls a knife out of its holder and plunges into her chest. We get a close up of Hitchcock's head while he watches the plane leave. A light reflection in the glass is aimed at his neck while the reflection of the plane flies across his head, foreshadowing his beheading by the train. Which, by the way, we see a picture of the train on the wall when the scene shifts to Clear, who is standing in front of it. Next to that, and possibly a happy coincidence, is a picture of something on fire. This is how she dies in part two. Terry is then standing in front of a picture of the bus, something that hits her later on in the film. Now, while we do not see Carter's death on screen when a building sign is swinging towards him, we do see a reversal of the airport fight scene, where during the fight scene, Alex tackles Carter to the ground, and at the end, Carter tackles Alex out of the way of a falling sign, only for it to lead to his undoing. Number one. While our number one is not as telling as our other selections, it is a slight reveal inside the life and mind of Stu Mocker in Scream. During Scream's finale, we see a whiteboard hanging on the wall just behind Stu as he is talking with Sydney on the phone. The board says, Hi Stu, sorry we missed your B-Day. We'll be home Sunday. Be good. Love, Mom and Dad. P.S. Feed the dog. This not only explains the absence of Stu's parents for the party, My mom and dad are so but it also points to something a tad bit sinister. Did you ever see a dog in Scream? We see a doggy door in the garage door, but no dog at Stu Mocker's house. Having earlier in the film seen dolls hanging from nooses in Stu's attic when Ghostface is chasing Sydney through the house earlier in the film, it may be safe to assume that Stu killed his dog after his parents left. It was a no-brainer to put Stu at number one because he had a dog. And he's a fan favorite. And he's a fan favorite. <laughs> and he probably killed the dog. <sighs> Stu was one sick cookie. He's still my favorite. I don't know what that says about me. 
but he's still my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, what did you think of this list? A lot of these Easter eggs I didn't notice the first time around, but now that they're out there, I was like, wow, if I was a little bit smarter, I probably would have figured out the movie just from some of those things. It's like the movie The Others, where Nicole Kidman's character talks about her daughter not breathing and the kids always freaking out that she's going to go mad and kill them so it was all there all along so movies like this are always fun because you you watch them you get the reveal and you're like oh my god it was there the whole time i think the difference though out of this entire list is that all of them except with well, except for the exception of The Thing, I probably will would have still gone on to watch all of them, but not The Thing. Because that literal two sentences tells you everything you need to know, mm -hmm. right? So I probably wouldn't have finished the movie, so I'm kind of glad I don't speak Norwegian. Because as he will tell you, it took me many, 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 many watches of The Thing to actually slightly enjoy it. <laughs> Just, I'm not a sci-fi person. It's nothing against John Carpenter. He's amazing. Nothing against the actors. Obviously also amazing. It has nothing to do with that. It's just I'm not a sci-fi mm -hmm. person. Had I been able to speak Norwegian and knew what exactly was said, I probably would have just skipped it completely. Yep. Now, are there any movies that are out there that have all these hidden clues that reveal the story plot? Before it's revealed to us by watching the movie let us know by dropping that in the comments and if you've been watching the pop five we do a, a mix of different things we cover behind the scenes we cover hidden gems we cover rankings let us know what you think of those and which ones are your favorites so that we can focus on delivering some of those also how the hell did it follows do so well there's a lot of people that love it. I hated that movie. You can't say anything because you fell asleep. He hasn't ever watched it in no, its entirety. No, I did. I watched it afterwards. Oh, well, it's horrible. It's not that bad. You literally pass the entity on through having sex with someone. Yeah. That's just dumb. It's so dumb. It was so bad. It's Final Destination, but with sex. No. It wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it it's wasn't. the same plot. No. It was just so stupid. <laughs> the if, whole plot, the whole idea of it is just dumb. Final Destination, if you avoid death, you pass it on to the next person. And it follows, you yes. sleep with somebody, you avoid no. death, you pass it on to somebody. No. Same difference. But. Except in It Follows, some people get to have a little bit more fun than in Final Destination. Okay, first of all, people had sex in Final Destination. Second of all, that makes more sense because there have been, like, kind of known things out there where, like, someone's like, oh, I avoided death, but then guess what? It caught up to me. Sex? No. It's just dumb. The plot was stupid and the movie was stupid. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Smile. Premises just gets recycled and changed a little bit. Anyway, thank you for watching this episode of The Pop 5. And there's a couple things that you need to do. You need to not only watch, but you need to like, subscribe, drop a comment, and win some stuff. Thanks for taking my line. Anyway, don't forget, there's a couple things that you need to do, and that is... Like, subscribe comment, share. So it's more than a couple, but it's not a lot. Yes, and then you can win stuff at 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 subscribers, and then we'll give away stuff with each video at 25, 50, 75, and 100 likes and comments. Anyway, until the next Pop 5, see, see ya. ya.